In this lecture, we will discuss the result known as Jensen's inequality. Okay. So before going to this result, we will consider an example of normal space. So in the previous lecture, we have already defined what is meant by a normal space. Now we will consider an example for a normal space. So for 1 less than or equal to p less than infinity, consider the set of scalar sequences Lp denoted as Lp which is equal to x of 1, x of 2 etc. such that x of j belongs to k and summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of j power p less than infinity. And for x belongs to Lp, we define norm p of x as mod x of 1 power p plus mod x2 of power p plus etc whole raised to 1 by p okay so we define norm p as like this on lp space so we can easily verify that this lp together with this norm defined like this is a normed space okay so this uh, will satisfy all the conditions of our normed space okay so it is clear that uh, this is uh, always greater than or equal to zero if x is uh, norm p of x is equal to zero means this is equal to zero that means x of one of power p x2 of power p etc equal to zero that means uh, all x of one uh, x is equal to zero okay so the second condition and third condition is uh, uh, the triangular inequality if we take any y from lp then norm of x plus y norm p of x plus y which is less than or equal to norm p of x plus norm p of y also uh, if we take any k belongs to k then norm p of kx which is equal to mod k into norm p of x so we can easily verify that this space lp with the, together with this norm is a normal space okay now uh, we consider the results jensen's inequality so this inequality states that let 1 less than or equal to p less than r less than infinity and consider an element from lp with the condition norm p of x less than or equal to 1 then norm r of x which is less than or equal to norm p of x okay the condition is 1 less than or equal to p less than r then this condition will satisfy so we want to prove this result okay so proof so we take an element from lp x belongs to lp such that this condition satisfy that is norm p of x less than or equal to 1 okay so this means uh, by definition summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of x of j power p whole raised to 1 by p which is less than or equal to 1 this is the definition of norm p we already defined okay now uh, this implies summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of j power p less than or equal to 1. So this is our equation number 1. Okay, we will use this equation later. Now, this implies some mod x of j power p less than or equal to 1. This for all j. So this implies mod x of j power p r less than or equal to mod x of j power p since p less than r and also mod x of j power p less than 1 okay this is given mod x of p less than 1 and also from this mod x of j power p less than or equal to 1 so by using this we can easily uh, say that mod x of j power r less than or equal to mod x of j power p okay so this means mod x summation j varies from 
1 to infinity mod x of j power r we take summation on both side okay Sum, uh, this implies summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of j power r less than or equal to 1 this is by our equation number 1 okay so this means summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of j power r whole raised to 1 bar we take whole raised to 1 by r here then which is less than or equal to 1 okay then by definition of our norm this implies this is norm r of x which is less than or equal to 1 okay so that is if norm p of x less than or equal to 1 then norm r of x less than or equal to 1 this is our equation number 2 okay now x belongs to lp b arbitrary and if norm p of x is equal to 0 then x is equal to 0 and hence norm r of x is also 0 okay if we take any x belongs to lp okay and if norm p of x is equal to 0 then by the property of norm we can write x is equal to 0 from this we can say that norm r of x is equal to 0 now if uh, now if norm p of x not equal to 0 okay then consider y equal to x by norm x norm p of x okay then clearly y belongs to lp it is clear that okay x belongs to lp so norm x this also belongs to lp okay so uh, then clearly y belongs to lp and also what is norm p of y norm p, if we take norm on both side of this equation here we will get norm p of x and uh, denominated also norm p of x so that is equal to 1 okay now then by equation number 2 we have already seen that x belong, if x belongs to lp then norm r of x less than or equal to 1 so from that uh, result we can write norm r of y less than or equal to 1 okay that is what is y here x by norm x norm p of x that means norm of x by norm p of x that is norm r of that is norm r of x by norm p of x which is less than or equal to 1 taking this norm p of x outside then we will get uh, 1 by norm p of x into norm r of x which is less than or equal to 1 okay then norm r of x less than or equal to norm p of x okay so this is if 1 less than or equal to p less than r less than infinity so this inequality is known as jensen's inequality okay so 1 less than or equal to p less than r which is less than infinity then norm r of x which is less than or equal to norm x norm p of x if norm p of x less than or equal to 1 okay so this uh, result is known as jensen's inequality okay now we will use uh, this inequality to prove some, some uh, to another result okay so from the above inequality we have lp or lp is containing L, lr and also if xn converges to x in lp then xn converges to x in lr for all x belongs to lp okay so we can prove we can easily prove this result proof if x belongs to lp so this implies summation by the definition of lp summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod of xj power p less than infinity so this implies summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod of x of j power p whole raised to 1 by p which is less than infinity 
so this implies mod p of x less than infinity by definition okay so this is the uh, definition of this is the definition of norm p okay so this implies we use the previous result that is jensen's inequality here that is we have a norm r of x which is less than norm p of x okay so by by the definition of norm r we can write summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of j power r whole raised 1 by r which is less than infinity okay from this we can write summation j varies from 1 to infinity mod x of j power r less than infinity so this means x belongs to l r we take x belongs to lp then we can easily uh, show that x belongs to l r okay that means lp subset of l r okay so uh, for this we have used jensen's inequality also if uh, xn converges to x in lp then by jensen's inequality norm xn minus norm r of xn minus x which is less than or equal to norm p of xn minus x okay so here we assumed that xn converges to x so that means this term goes to zero so that means norm xn minus x that means norm r of x n minus x converges to zero okay so this means x n converges to x in l r okay so this